Hey guys, it's Rebecca from alltapestrycrochet.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to design a tapestry crochet pattern using this program called Crochet Charts. It's a program that is available on the internet, so you're going to have to go on to any whatever browser you use and click into the address bar stitchworks.com slash downloads. When you open that, it'll bring you directly to the downloads page and you'll click on this download button right here. It seems like it's only available for Windows and it says it's only available for up to Windows 8, but it's also available for Windows 10. Uh, when you click on it, it'll start to download and you should see a bar at the bottom of your screen. When it's done downloading, it'll say run right here. When you click run, it will open a setup box and you just follow the instructions on the box to um, to save the program to your computer. Once you have the program saved, go ahead and open it up. The very first thing that you do is click OK. If you click on one of these buttons here before you click OK, it'll end up causing the program to crash. So be sure that before you click on any buttons, just click OK. The next thing that you should do is arrange the panel as I have it here. I'm, I can't remember 100% what it looks like when you first download the program, but I know for sure that Properties is not there. And I believe that um, Pattern Color and Stitches are, I think Stitches is like a tab at the bottom. Let me see if I could get it to look like how it used to look. Okay, so I think it might look something more like this, where you have like a one tab for pattern colors, one tab for stitches, and properties is not there. So the first thing that you should do is pull up one of these and give it its own space, because you're going to be using this pattern colors box a lot. The way that you give it its own space is by hovering it over the side column until there is a blue open space behind it. If you hover it over one of the other boxes, it will replace it. So you need to put it where there is an open space and then drop. Now you need to get the properties box into the side column. You do that by coming over to this space here, right clicking coming down to properties and the properties box will open. Once the properties box is open, click and drag and once again uh, place it in its own open space. Now once it's here, uh, you can readjust the size of the boxes by going down to the edge and clicking and dragging up until you have the desired size of the boxes. Pattern stitches is really not a necessary box because there's only one stitch that you're going to be using. So you could um, get rid of it if you want if you want to, but I usually I just leave it. There, it, it doesn't take up much space. The properties box, um, this is as big as it needs to be. It doesn't get any smaller than that anyway. Probably the biggest box that uh, that you should have is the pattern pattern colors box because you might be using a lot of colors and as you add more colors this box is going to fill up. Now that you have the side panel arranged we can go ahead and get started. To get started you need to select one of these uh, grid options here. You have square grid and you have the triangle grid. You're not going to be using the, the, um, the round grid and Maybe in the future I might learn how to use it to make like base patterns, but right now I only know how to use uh, the square grid for the modified single crochet stitch and the triangle grid for a regular single crochet stitch. For now I'm going to start with the square grid to do the modified single crochet stitch. When you click on it, a grid is going to appear on your screen. Now that the grid is open, we could change the size of the grid you want to change the size because the smaller it is, the less that you're going to have to work with. And so you want it to be bigger so you have plenty of space to add more stitches if, if you want to. The size of the chart really doesn't matter because it's only there for reference. What's really going to matter is the stitches that we put on top of it. 
To start putting stitches down, come over here to the stitches box and type in ring and choose the first ring, not the adjustable ring, just the regular ring. When you start putting a lot of rings down, you'll notice that they overlap with each other. And that's not the way that it's going to be during the whole um, thing because we're going to resize them right now. To resize them, click your mouse um, at the upper left hand corner of the stitches and pull down and just drag over the stitches. Once they're all selected, I'm going to see right here that the X scale and Y scale become available to edit. You're just going to change both of those to 0.5. Once they're both at 0.5, the, that's the size that they're going to stay, or we're going to use that size stitch for creating our chart. If you put down more rings right now, it's not going to be 0.5, so um, we're not going to put down any more rings just by clicking on the stitches, I mean on the intersections right here. The way that we're going to continue to add more stitches is by copying all of this. So once again, highlight it, right click, and click copy and then you could do two different things you could right click and click paste or you could hover your mouse over what seems like the middle of the um, you know just like the middle the center of these stitches hover your mouse over it on your keyboard click control and V and once you click V the stitches will be laid down. So you could keep your finger on um, the control button and just keep clicking V each time you have the mouse hovered over the the next row. And you could just keep doing that all the way down. Uh, a way to speed this up is by once you have like a, a decent amount of stitches just keep uh, copying and pasting and then you line them up like that and each time you know you could just keep doubling the amount of stitches that you have so it's a lot faster than just laying it down row by row. Continue to copy and paste until you reach a, a size that seems good to you. Once you've reached a size that seems like it'll be uh, big enough for the pattern that you want to create you can come over to here where it says no grid and click on that button and the grid behind it will disappear. The advantage of not having the grid is that you could see the stitches a lot easier but if at any point you want to add more stitches and you want the support of the grid you should click the square grid again and it'll just come right back to where it was. What I mean by not having the support of the grid is um, when you have the grid and you copy and you paste stitches, they'll always line up on the intersection of, of these squares. And that makes it really easy for you, get, for you to get them perfectly lined up. But when you don't have the grid um, and you try to move the stitches around, they're not going to line up in any place in particular. So you have to, it's a, it's a lot more difficult to get the stitches correctly lined up. Once you finish the chart and you have it at a good size, you can save this as a template to use for a later project. All you have to do is come up to here where it says File, Save As, and then you should save it as something like Modified Single Crochet Template, and then you'll be able to open it in the future and use that for another design. Now we can start the pattern. In order to start the pattern, the first thing that we have to do is choose a color that we want to create the pattern. To choose a color, you just have to come over here to the pattern colors box and click on background. And then you could choose from one of the colors that they already have available, or you could create a custom color. To create a custom color, click on one of the blank uh, boxes under custom colors and then just drag it over to a color that you like. And then once you have a color that you like, click Add to Customs, cu Custom Colors. It will be saved in this little box of custom colors. Every time you open the program, it'll be there. And then once you're ready to choose the color, just click OK. And then you need to switch the tool from this tool, which is the moving tool, to the, the uh, Edit Color tool. 
when you click on this and then you click on a stitch, it'll change the color of the stitch. But when you have this tool selected, you won't be able to move the stitches around. So let's say you wanted to add more stitches and you went like this and you did copy and then you did paste and then you wanted to realign it. Once every time you try to drag it, it's just going to be coloring the stitches. It's not going to be moving it. So in order to be able to move the stitches again, you had to click on the um, this tool again and then you'll be able to move it. And then once you want to paint it again, you can't just be you can't just click on the stitches, you have to choose the paint can again. And then once you have the paint can selected, then you can start painting the stitches again. So I'm just going to take all of this, undo all of that stuff. So once you want to add a new color, all you have to do is come back to background again and then just click a new color and start applying the color and You'll notice that once you apply the color, it shows up in this box here. When you undo them, it, it, it um, no longer appears in the box. So when you have things in the box here, it makes it a lot easier because if you want to switch between colors, all that you have to do is click on the color that you want to start using and pull it up to where it says background and release. And now you'll be using that other color again. So let's say you're going along and you have one portion of your project that you really like, but there's another portion that you don't like as much and you don't want to have to start all over again. Well, the good thing is that you don't. All you have to do is select the section and go over here to where it says background color. You'll notice it has an X in it. It has that X because not all of the stitches that are selected are the same color but you can um, put it back to all being white just by clicking on the background color and once this box shows up white will already be selected and you just click OK and now it's like you were able to start over again without having to erase everything that was on your chart. If there's only one specific section that you want to undo and you don't want to undo everything around it you could just use this lasso tool here and select the section that you want to change and once you have it selected once again you go up to background color and then choose the color that you want to switch it with and click OK or let's say for example you've you've uh, finished the pattern and it doesn't take up the whole chart let's say it only takes up about two-thirds or so and then you want to erase the rest of the chart because it's just extra you could just um, use the square selection mode and copy the part that you want to erase and then just click delete selection and those stitches will disappear. Let's say you know that most of the stitches are going to be blue and you're just going to have like maybe a polka dot pattern. Um, so you don't want to have to fill in all of the background stitches one by one. What you can do is you could come up to here where it says stitches and replace the color. You choose original color white because that's the current color of all of the uh, blank stitches and then you choose the new color. So like I said um, you want the background to be blue so you click blue, you click OK, click OK again and then all of these stitches are going to turn blue. Now you can make it like maybe blue with white polka dots or something like that. When you use the replace a color function, keep in mind that if your chart is really big, it's going to take a while. So if you don't see anything happening right away, just know that it's likely because your chart is, is uh, large and the computer is taking a long time to change all of those stitches.